Mr. Speaker, will you please call the House to order? The House will come to order. Reverend Baldwin Barnes will offer a prayer. O Creator and source of light, life, and love, we are grateful for another day in your presence. As the spiritual children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we thank you for pointing them to the mountain where you revealed the light of your word that continues to provide light onto our feet. As the spiritual siblings of Peter, James, and John, we marvel at how you took them to the mountain where you unconcealed the life of your glory that continues to take our breath away. On this beautiful morning, we gather at this place of assembly as we are reminded of the mountain where you demonstrated your love of your people. We will forever be amazed. During this holy month, we rejoice in your resurrection, anointing, and soon coming. We acknowledge that every good gift comes from you. We sing the wisdom that gives us government of the people, by the people, and for the people. We come this morning as the assembled representatives of that government. We pray for moral fortitude to undergird our choices that would best serve the people and honor you. We pray, most holy one, that righteousness will be shown in all our actions. We pray that our unity grounded in your oneness might cause us to cherish and appreciate our diversity. On this day, as we celebrate Caribbean Heritage Day, we recognize that the fabric of our society is richer, stronger, and more beautiful because we have come from everywhere to live with, with each other in the freedom and liberty you have provided us. After a historic evening last night, Lord, we want to thank you for our women veterans who have served this country and uh, have provided grounding where all of us can be equal on every level all the way to the top. As your members work today, we pray that the special blessing of your Holy Spirit might rest on them. And as we accomplish your purposes, may all be blessed and all God's children said together, amen, amen, and amen. Visitors are invited to join the members in the Pledge of Allegiance. Our pledge is to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You can sit there. A quorum being present, the clerk will read the journal of Tuesday, June 7th. Mr. Morelli. Mr. Speaker, I uh, move to dispense with a further reading of the journal of Tuesday, June 7th, and that the same stand approved. Without objection, so ordered. Mr. Morelli. Yes, uh, good morning. Thank you, Pastor, for that uh, beautiful prayer. Uh, welcome, colleagues. Um, let me, um, in just a minute, give you the schedule for what will be another uh, busy day here. Um, with, again, a lot of uh, things going on at the same time. Before I do that, June 8th, however, has some historical notes, which I'd like to share with the members. On this day, June 8th, 1908, the United States National Conservation Commission was appointed by a great New Yorker, President Theodore Roosevelt, which prepared the first inventory of the natural resources of the United States. On this day, in 1966, the National Football League and the American Football League announced that they would merge the first quote-unquote Super Bowl, although I'm not sure it was called that at the time. Mr. Speaker, between the two leagues, took place at the end of the 1966 season and was viewed by more than 51 million Americans. And 
On June 8, 1953, the Supreme Court of the United States ruled that restaurants in Washington, D.C. could not refuse to serve black patrons. District of Columbia versus John R. Thompson set the path for the unanimous decision in Brown versus the Board of Education, ending segregation in public schools less than one year later. Um, with that as our historical uh, context, uh, as I indicated, we will have a, uh, another busy day on the floor, and I would ask for the members' cooperation in getting through our uh, significant body of work. Members have on their desks an A calendar and a debate list. Mr. Speaker, I now move to advance the A calendar. On Mr. Morelli's motion, the A calendar is advanced. Thank you, sir. After any introductions and housekeeping, and I know that we do have uh, some important introductions, we'll begin our work today on consent. Members should be aware we will be doing significant work throughout the day on consent, um, including from the main calendar, uh, calendar number 864 to calendar number 883, rules report 35 to 84, and we will be also consenting uh, from that A calendar rules report 85 to rules report 149. So we do have a lot of work to do. Uh, included in our work, we will be taking up a resolution and legislation by Ms. Russell as a part of our Women's Veterans Day celebration and will otherwise be working uh, from the calendar and the debate list. Uh, as we have done in the last several days, we will be having several committees off the floor. So if you are a member of the following committees, play, pay special uh, attention to announcements from the desk. Uh, we will be having committee meetings on the Governmental Employees Committee, Housing Committee, Racing and Wagering, Codes, Ways and Means, and uh, probably later in the day, the Rules Committee. Um, we will uh, no doubt, after introductions, um, be uh, talking to the minority has needs for a conference um, probably sooner rather than later, and I'll apprise members of any other conferences as the need arise, arises during the day. So with that as a general outline, Mr. Speaker, uh, this would be the time to take up introductions and housekeeping. Certainly. Mr. Perry, for the purposes of a introduction. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to uh, welcome, on behalf of all of my Caribbean American colleagues, and those who would like to be Caribbean American, as today we celebrate here in Albany Caribbean American heritage. Uh, the month of June uh, was declared across the United States by President Obama and previous presidents before him as Caribbean uh, Heritage Month. Uh, so today we were blessed with a prior from Pastor Baldwin Barnes who is the pastor of the Christian Fellowship Seventh-day Adventist Church, which is located in my district. Uh, pastor Barnes has been a pastor for the past 24 years. Uh, he has served the last four years at Christian Fellowship in my district. Uh, he was born in Jamaica. Uh, actually, he was born in the Bahamas. Uh, son of uh, Jamaican parents. So uh, he's indeed a, a Caribbean man. Uh, a, a, with him is his beautiful wife, Pollyanna Barnes, who was born in Haiti. So we have quite a combination here. And uh, we want to welcome uh, Ms., Mrs. Pollyanna Barnes here today also. Pastor Barnes is not only a preacher of the gospel, and, uh, but he is pretty well-rounded. He is a, a chemical engineer. He also has been a teacher and a businessman. So he, he runs the whole gamut. Certainly, uh, I'm sure, is inspirational in the priors that he deliver and was uh, certainly helpful in preparing him to come and Bless us with the priors today. I'd like to ask Mr. Speaker, uh, please, on behalf of all of my colleagues, extend the privileges and cordialities of the House uh, to our guest and his wife, Pastor Bart. Thank you. Certainly, on behalf of Mr. Perry, the Speaker, and all the members, 
Reverend Barnes, Mrs. Barnes, we welcome you here to the New York State Assembly. We extend to you the privileges of the floor. Thank you for coming and beginning this session with prayer. It is something that this body always needs. Thank you, and we hope to see you again. Thank you so very much. Mr. Santa Barbara for an introduction. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for allowing me to interrupt the proceedings for the purposes of an introduction. Today, I'm very pleased uh, to be joined by students from my alma mater, <coughs> Shamat Middle School in, uh, in my hometown of Rotterdam. <coughs> they make up a group, of, uh, a group of students called Sabre Nation. These are seventh and eighth grade students that have joined us here today. Uh, they have worked to create a positive environment at their school since launching the Sabre Citizen Campaign at the beginning of this school year. The campaign focuses on bringing characteristics of respect, responsible, honest, caring, and trustworthy into the halls of Shawmop Middle School. It started off on a very positive note on the very first day when every student's locker was decorated with messages like, aim high, always smile, and don't let anyone bring you down. These students also added a new banner to the school's entrance as a reminder of the characteristics painted on the building stairs and framed posters featuring Shawmont students illustrating positive examples of respect throughout the entire building. Students were then recognized for living up to the Sabre citizens characteristics. Your Sabre citizen recognition slips were given to all of the staff with the instructions that if they see someone being a great Sabre citizen to acknowledge them. For their efforts to create a positive and inclusive culture throughout the school, these students and their principal were recognized with the Schenectady County Human Rights Commission's Youth Achievement Award. Sabre Nation is a diverse student organization that exemplifies the characteristics of respect and citizenship we hope to see in all of our schools. And I'm very proud to have these students here with us today, Mr. Speaker. They are joined by Angelica Morris, who is the Executive Director of the Schenectady County Human Rights Commission. They are joined by Christina Ruzio, who is uh, from the Guidance Department at Shama and Luann Duxbury, who is one of, the, one of Shawmont's uh, many great teachers. Mr. Speaker, if you would welcome them all to the chamber and extend to them the cordialities of the House. Certainly, on behalf of Mr. Santa Barbara, the Speaker, and all the members, we welcome these extraordinary junior high school students here to the New York State Assembly. We extend to you the privileges of the floor. Hope that you will enjoy the proceedings. Hope that you will continue to pursue uh, justice in this state and in this country as you develop. Thank you so very much. Please continue your great work. Thank you. Hmm? Mr. Morelli. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, for allowing a uh, very special introduction. Uh, obviously, the man sitting to my left needs no uh, introduction to this chamber. Uh, a member who served with great distinction for uh, more than two decades uh, and is a dear friend to all of us. Uh, those of you, particularly newer members, note that there's a flower on our desk. And uh, it's a, a tradition here that Harvey began many years ago, originally uh, on uh, his wife Ellen's birthday. And it then became sort of an acknowledgement of family day. And his wife Ellen, who uh, graced us with her presence here, uh, many, many times, countless times over the years that I've served. Um, an extraordinary woman, uh, just a delight to spend time with. Uh, sadly, uh, we lost Ellen uh, just a short uh, time ago. But Harvey wanted to continue the tradition of Family Day because this is his family, um, a devoted father, a devoted husband, um, and has a, a special son, Ricky, um, who he has devoted much of his career uh, on behalf of. In fact, Harvey is now the executive director of the Harvey and Ellen uh, Wiesenberg Special Needs Resource Corporation. He continues his efforts, but um, he is an extraordinary individual, uh, a friend to all, part of our extended family, and will always be. If you could please acknowledge him and obviously the memory of his devoted wife, who was uh, so uh, much a part of our family as well, Ellen. Certainly, on behalf of Mr. Morelli, the speaker, and all the members, Harvey, my friend, welcome home. This is your place. Thank you so very much. We need not extend any more greeting other than that. And we love you. Thank you, sir.
Ms. Russell for the purposes of a introduction. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today we are joined in the chamber by numerous women from around the state. <clears throat> These women have served in the United States Army, Air Force, Coast Guard, Navy, Marines, National Guard units, as well as reserve units. <clears throat> we have women who have served in World War II, Korea, Vietnam, Desert Storm, Afghanistan, and the War on Terror. Many received recognition and medals as a result of their service. Their military specialties include scientist, chemical biologist, radiological, nuclear, and explosives operations, transportation specialists, medical technicians, medical surgery nurses, and drill instructors, just to name a few. All of them have served with honor. They are joining us today in conjunction with Women Veterans Recognition Day. And I just ask, Mr. Speaker, that you extend to them the privileges of the floor and give these special veterans a very warm welcome to our house today. Thank you. Ms. Jaffe, uh, thank on the you, same Mr. subject. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, um, for allowing us to interrupt the proceedings to recognize these extraordinary women who gave great service to our country. I would like to specifically acknowledge Maureen Morgan, who is a Rockland County uh, resident, but she also is outstanding leadership, have, provides outstanding leadership, and she is the commander in Rockland County of the American Legion. So I would like to also acknowledge Maureen Morgan of Rockland County. And thank you, Mr. Speaker. We give the courtesy and welcome the wonderful group of women, as well as Maureen. Thank you. Certainly. Mr. Dendecker, same subject. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On the resolution, as uh, chairman of the Veterans Committee and on behalf of all members of the Veterans Committee, uh, I'd like to formally uh, just I'd like, I'd like to formally welcome all of these women that have served in the armed forces, thank them for their services to our country, and more importantly, thank them for being role models for the young women today that are interested in, in careers in the military and their service to our country. So I thank you and I welcome you here to the chamber today. Mr. Hawley. Yes, good morning. Uh, as ranking member of the uh, Veterans Affairs Committee, uh, it gives me special uh, uh, honor to uh, introduce and recognize America's women's veterans. Uh, from the time of the Revolutionary War, when Molly Pitcher initially served as a volunteer water carrier, only to take over her husband's cannon when he became disabled to today's military, Women's accomplishments have been noteworthy. This year, we're remembering the 70th anniversary of the end of World War II, and American women in the military played a significant role in securing the eventual victory. Nearly 350,000 American women served in uniform, both at home and abroad, volunteering for the newly formed Women's Army Auxiliary Corps, the Navy Women's Reserve, the Marine Corps Women's Reserve, the Coast Guard Women's Reserve, the Women's Air Force Service Pilots, the Army Nurse Corps, and the Navy Nurse Corps. A General Eisenhower felt that he could not win the war without the aid of women in uniform. The contributions of the women in America, whether on the farm or in the factory or in uniform to D-Day, was a key to our su successful invasion effort. Women in uniform took office and clerical jobs in the armed forces in order to free men to fight. They also drove trucks and repaired airplanes and worked as laboratory technicians, rigged parachutes, served as radio operators, analyzed photographs, flew military aircraft across the country, test flew newly repaired planes, and even trained anti-aircraft artillery gunners by acting as flying targets. Some women served near the front lines in the Army Nurse Corps, where 16 were killed as a result of direct enemy fire. 68 American service women were captured as POWs in the Philippines. More than 1,600 nurses were decorated for bravery under fire and meritorious service. And 565 WACs in the Pacific Theater won combat a decoration. At the Vietnam Memorial, there is a statue depicting a nurse holding a grievously wounded soldier. Many of these women served in medical facilities close to the front lines and experienced the firsthand horror of war. Some remain haunted by those images 
long after the war's end. In today's military, the role of women is essential, and their duties continue to evolve. We salute those women who have served and those who serve us today, often enduring difficult separation from their families. Now, this year will mark my ninth annual Patriot trip to Washington, D.C. And four, two years ago, uh, four women, a World War II a veteran woman, a Korean era, Vietnam, and Afghanistan woman, all presented a wreath at the Tomb of the Unknowns. So we are grateful for all your sacrifices, and I'm proud, very proud, to acknowledge your service to America. God bless our great country, and God bless all of you. Ms. Schimmel. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, too, rise to honor the women that served this country, and the women, thank you for coming today. Women serving in the military continue to demonstrate their professionalism, dedication, leadership, and skills, as well as their patriotism and love for their country with its liberties, freedoms, and rights as they stand and mobilize in record numbers to support Operation Noble Eagle, Operation Enduring Freedom, Operation Iraqi Freedom, Operation New Dawn, Operation Inherent Resolve, and the Global War on Terrorism. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ms. Hunter. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to welcome my fellow women veterans to the Assembly Chamber today. I'm honored to be one of the only women veterans in the chamber today of over the... <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> of the over two million women veterans who served um, in the military. It's an honor to be one of you. I'd like to personally acknowledge my uh, past post commander and past county commander of my American Legion post 1642, Darlene Spivey, who came here today uh, to represent women. I am honored to be one of you. I'm honored to have served. Thank you very much for your service. On behalf of Ms. Russell, Ms. Jaffe, Mr. Dendecker, Mr. Hawley, Ms. Simmel, and Ms. Hunter, the speaker and all the members, we welcome this extraordinary group of women, veterans, former soldiers here to the New York State Assembly. We extend to you the privileges of the floor. We know that our freedom today to be here and speak is built on your shoulders. We thank you for that service that you have provided that provides freedom for all in this country. Thank you so very much. Mr. Morelli. Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, we're going to need uh, to uh, take a uh, break for party conferences, so if I could ask you to go to Ms. Schimmel first. Ms. Schimmel, for the purposes of an announcement. Yes, Mr. Speaker, there will be a majority conference in the Speaker's conference room after adjournment. Thank you. Majority conference, Speaker's conference room, Mr. Morelli? Yes, sir. Could you please uh, go uh, to Mr. Uh, Lopez for an announcement as well? Mr. Lopez, for the purposes of an announcement? Yes, Mr. Speaker, there will be an immediate members only Republican conference in the parlor. Republican conference in the parlor. Mr. Morelli? Yes, sir. I now move that the House stand at ease until the conclusion of party conferences. House will stand at ease.